Hey man, what do you want to do for dinner? Um, I don't know. I was looking at this new recipe. I'm it's uh, chicken and some saffron rice, but uh, I was going through some of the different things we have. I mean, we've got chicken in the freezer and we've got some rice, but uh, obviously one of the main things we need is uh, saffron, but it uh, seems we ran out uh, last time we were cooking. Well, actually, um, I was over at the Asian market and I picked up some gardenia fruit. Uh, I'm pretty sure we could extract some saffron from that. You know what? I think I heard something about that, too. Um, yeah, there's uh, something in the saffron, or something in the gardenia fruit that we can get saffron from. Because, uh, you know, saffron's just, like, really expensive nowadays. It's just, I guess, just the way that a... Because it's got such a limited growth yield and everything, it has to be adulterated with all these other uh, plants and stuff. Uh, maybe we can just try getting some of the saffron out of the gardenia fruit. Alright, um, I don't know, how do you think we would, like, go about getting this, though? Like, what do we, what do we do? We just have these hard gardenia fruits. Uh, I think first the thing we need to do is, uh, you know, try and crush them up. I've got a, we can just use, like, a blunt end of something. Uh, oh, you know what, I think, um, mortar and pestle might work. Oh, you know what? That'll be perfect. So, um, we can just crush that up and then, uh, but the next thing we need to do is, uh, try and get all of the, uh, separate the saffron from all of the other ingredients in the gardenia fruit. Yeah, right. But, and we'll want to get the shell out, too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we'll probably need to get, you know, like, the saffron into some sort of liquid. What, uh, we'll have to, like, mix it in a solvent or something. What do you think we should use for that? Um... Uh, I'm thinking the, maybe like a 40% ethanol, uh, water solution. Yeah, I don't see that, why that wouldn't work. What, um, how are we actually going to, like, extract it, though? Like, what are we going to use? Um, I think the best thing to do would be, uh, to use an ethyl acetate, uh, so you know we can, uh, separate the organic and uh, aqueous uh, solution. Uh, but we'll need a dis we'll need a, our distillation uh, flask and everything, or distillation tube. Separatory so, funnel. Separatory funnel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could work. Um, let's see. Uh, how are we going to know if we get the right thing, though? Um, what if... Hmm, what if we did a TLC of a sample of pure and then our sample afterwards, and then we can compare the RF values. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, I know we said we ran out of the saffron, but I think we have, like, a couple of uh, strands of saffron. I mean, it obviously wouldn't be enough to cook with, but we'd definitely be able to get a, do a sample test with that, and I think there might even be just enough to do a, uh, what's that other one I read about? Spot test, yeah, uh, with some sulfuric acid. Uh, do a spot test to see if they change the same color. Right, yeah. Um, where I think I read about this somewhere. Um, what was that article called? Um, I think it was a study of some kind. Uh, let me see over here real quick. Uh, what was that called? It was called the uh, it was a study of genuity of saffron samples. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Um, says it was a case study. Yeah, where who who did that? Uh, let me see real quick. It was uh some people named Bark, Chrisanna Murthy, and Shinde. I believe I'm pronouncing those correctly. Yeah, they um I think they did a couple other things with it too, but I think. Um, just doing the liquid-liquid extraction should give us what we want, and then we'll be able to make our rice. Um, I think the liquid-liquid extraction would be just fine for our purposes. Right, right. Um, trying to think, what else? Like we said, we'll use the separatory funnel, get it through liquid-liquid extraction. Hey, this is uh, this turned out pretty well. Yeah, man, it's uh, 
nice savory taste to it. Uh, a little bit better from the saffron, but uh, take all in all, it's pretty good. Yeah, no, I definitely get turned out well. Yeah. Um, just had to grind down our gardenia fruit uh, to retrieve the saffron. You know, had the 15 milliliters of the 40% ethanol. Uh, use our stem funnel and filter paper to you know, just filter out the solution. Uh, you know, how to warm the saffron solution. And, you know, add the saffron to the, our separatory funnel. You know, what, else, uh, what did we do after that? Oh, well, um, after we'd added it to the separatory funnel, we used uh, 15 milliliters of ethyl acetate. And, um, you know, once you shook it up and released the pressure from it, oh, it yeah. uh, gave us the two distinct layers, our organic and our uh, aqueous layer. Um, was it was our aqueous layer on the bottom? No, our aqueous layer uh, was on the top, because if you remember, the uh, organic uh, layer was more dense, so it was going to be on the bottom. Right, right. Well, it's um more based off of polarity, too, though. Well, yeah, but that's the polarity is... Uh, why we have the uh, two distinct uh, layers. Yeah. Because if they were, um, you know, both nonpolar or both polar, then uh, they'd be mixing. But because one was polar and the other was nonpolar, then they're not wanting to, not wanting to mix in together. So that's why we had the, that distinct separation from the organic and aqueous layer. Right. But, um, yeah, so we had, what was it, we repeated the extraction, though, just to make sure that we had gotten all of the aqueous and um, solvents out. Oh, yeah, you know, just to make sure for everything. But, um, yeah, then after that, we were able to do our TLC and our, um, what was it, our color spot test. Um, mm -hmm. TLC turned out well. Um, the pure saffron with those couple rods we had left of our old um, saffron, had a 0 0.821, um, what is it, RF value, and our product was a 0 0.877. So it was a difference of about 0 0.065, which isn't too bad. Um, no, that's, that's pretty good. I think that was, yeah, that's, because on a, I think that seems about right. Uh, but, um, I mean, just in case, we always ran the uh, spot color test. Yeah, the spot color test was extremely well. I was a little nervous at first, because I'm like, uh, on the pure saffron, we had turned a dark color, a dark purple color, but then I'm like about ready to drop it into our uh, sample, our product, and then I'm like, I'm not sure if it's going to turn, but after uh, dropping the sulfuric acid in, and I'm like, it started turning immediately, and I'm like, wow, wow. like, seems like those two colors are just about the same. Yeah, that um definitely let us conclude that we had saffron. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Do you think there's anything we could have done differently? Um, I don't know if we did. We had any major errors. Um, I know I definitely could have crushed up more fruit. Um, originally yeah. we had wanted to start with about fifteen milliliters of our ethanol and saffron mixture, but we only had about ten after we had filtered out the ethanol with the saffron from the crushed fruit. Yeah, well, the uh, thing is, is that the saffron does have a limited yield. So, I mean, I was proud. I was uh, happy with the amount of yield that we got in the first place. So I think, um, I think that it was pretty successful there. Yeah, I think we could have uh, probably gotten a little bit more, but with, uh, I mean, I was getting hungry, so with the time that we had, I was happy with the amount of saffron that we got. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think it went pretty well.